Hey, what's up everyone? On this week's episode, we're gonna talk about growth, give you an update on the tank, and go through some future plans. So like I said, uh, to this week's update is gonna deal with growth in, in, in my tank. Uh, when it comes to my corals and fish, I pass by the tank so much and, and I look at it so many times uh, when I'm home that even the smallest amount of growth I sometimes don't see. So a way that I've developed to try and recognize growth in my tank is I'll take some still shots at certain times and dates and then go back at a later point and compare those pictures to the corals. I'm going to put in some pictures of the system that I've taken along the way and you can see for yourself the amount of growth that's happened uh, in a short amount of time. So I hope that you can see uh, by the photos and the video that um, the growth that actually goes on in the tank during certain periods. Uh, it's amazing that you look at the photos and then look at the corals and say, wow, that, there is a difference there. Um, so as far as uh, an update is concerned, um, it's, there's been three water changes since the changeovers uh, to Red Sea Pro, um, I do bi-weekly water changes, so we're talking six weeks have, have gone by since I've switched salts. And my feeling about it is that it was a really important move for me because the response of the corals have been uh, really, really, awesome to me. Um, the zoas are coloring up and developing more and more every day. The, uh, as you can see, this is the frag from Fish FX and it's open. It's colored up really well and I look forward to that filling out that rock and adding another tone of color to the garden. The fire and ice corals uh, have filled out and are doing wonderful. The eagle eyes are closed. I moved them to the rock and I glued them to here. And uh, as of yet, they haven't opened up and it's been about a day or so. So I'm just gonna leave them there, let, let them be. And hopefully they open up on their own. The green encrusting Monty is doing really well. Matter of fact, I just moved it off the sand and up to the midline of the tank, as well as the pink Setosa. The red Monty is showing signs of growth. So I look forward to filling out this section with Monty and, and this is the first one that I can honestly say is, is done well in my tank. I've put two different ones and they just haven't done well. But this one is doing really nicely. The Duncans, they closed up a little bit since in, in the last uh, hour or so, uh, but they are opening up more and more every day. So I think I got over the hump on, the, on them and they'll, they're on their way to bouncing back. The purple candy canes are doing as well as they have been doing. So has the green ones. And they're filling out more and more and getting thicker and thicker. A mushroom rock is still mushroom rock. And uh, I do have hopes though um, that this rock here 
We'll be going to Billy Pipes, and I'll uh, update you more on that in, the, in a few minutes. The green pallies have really greened up since I changed salts. Um, there is still probably some kind of irritation from being so close to the mushroom, so uh, unfortunately they have encrusted off the rock that they are on, and they are down on this rock, so moving them is going to be hard, but it will happen once I start fragging pieces off. The chalice in the back is growing more and more and hitting the uh, overflow, so my plans are to frag that also and put it on this shelf here and let it grow out. The red digi, as far as that's concerned, um, this brown part of the skeleton is um, pretty much stayed where it has. Uh, so I'm hopeful that is gonna remain there because the remaining part of it, polyps are coming out more and more, even on the cut section in the middle of the screen, there are polyps that come out, um, that are out in there. The remaining part that's on the, on the plug is growing. So really at this point, I'm just letting it do its thing, uh, whichever way it goes, so be it. The purple digi is growing really, really thick. And the only problem that I've had with it is right here. Uh, since that area is shaded, um, a lot of the polyps have dropped off that section and I don't really know and I'm going to have to take a look at what those two black dots are. That remains to be seen and probably be on next week's update. Over here, um, the euphelias are all doing excellent. The anemones are doing fine. They haven't grown really. The one in the back, the darker of the two, has been pretty much moving around that rock every day. There was one point in time when I thought I was going to lose him, but uh, he filled out and, you know, pretty much uh, is hanging in there. The frog spawn is doing as good as it's always it always has. And the hammer is also filled out more. As far as the fish go, uh, they're all doing well. And the mollies have really uh, grown since I put them in the tank. And they're doing their job. Uh, they're removing some unwanted algae. So I'm really thrilled about how they've made it in the system. Uh, the hippo tang and yellow tang and also the powder blue are all well ick free and eating like horses as well as the fox face. Uh, so, the clownfish, the onyx clown, as you can see there, goes back and forth between the frog spawn, the first, the larger of the two anemones, and the torch coral. She hasn't decided where she wants to go, but she'll lay her eggs underneath the frog spawn, and she'll go visit the anemone, and then she usually um, will start to bed down here and eventually make her way back to the frog spawn and sleep. Um, right now you can't see the other clown. He's under here and it looks like they he's tending to another batch of eggs that have been laid. As far as uh, future plans are concerned, yeah, that's occurring down here. I've been uh, talking to Billy Pipes and we've been talking about um, he's going to build me a 40 gallon breeder um, so I'm, my intentions are to change out the sump for the bigger uh, tank create more volume in my system and increasing the baffles to try and eliminate some of the uh, micro bubbles that I have in the system and what will probably happen as you can see the quarantine tank I took out but my intentions are once I receive the new sump to um, create a quarantine out of this one. But I just wanna see how much room the 40 gallon breed is gonna take up underneath my stand and what kind of room I have over here for a quarantine tank. So when that happens, um, you'll see it as, it as it occurs. 
The only other question in the system is my lighting. I'm really frustrated about the, the Chinese black box LEDs um, since I can't connect to Wi-Fi on them. And I'm contemplating going to T5. Yes, everybody lately is going back to T5. So it's a tried and true method and there are a lot of good results from it. I don't know, I mean, I'm kicking around so many ideas, it's, it's ridiculous. I'm thinking about getting two uh, supplemental T5s, throwing them up here and seeing what, what happens with those, or just to take these out, go to a four, four bulb unit and, you know, seeing how that does. So that's pretty much the update for this week. Let me know what you think about, um, you know, T5s, whether I should go all in or, you know, just supplement. And uh, until next week, this is Scott, and I'll talk to you soon around the reef tank.